Fear Not, episode 156. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Kathy Collard Miller. Welcome, Kathy. How are you today? I'm thrilled to be with you, Billy. Very good. Thank you. Are you ready to fear not today? I am very eager to share. Kathy is a wife, mother of two, and a grandmother of two. She's also an award-winning author of over 50 books and articles, including Partly Cloudy with Scattered Worries. As a women's conference speaker, she has spoken in over 30 U.S. states and eight foreign countries. Kathy and her husband of 47 years often speak and write together. They're also lay counselors. Kathy, would you take a few moments to fill in those gaps and maybe give us an additional brief glimpse of your personal life? I would love to. My delight are my two grandchildren, and I love it because they're 10 years apart, and so we started with a little grandson, and I'll tell you the truth, Billy, I really wanted a little girl also, And we uh, were given that, our little precious Matilda, who was born 10 months ago, and she is such a delight. So we feel very blessed that we have the grandson and the granddaughter. Kathy, would you also share with us today one of the biggest fears that you've had to face? Oh, boy, this is easy to find, unfortunately, because uh, 40 years ago, Billy, I was an abusive mom, and I physically, verbally uh, abused my, our two-year-old little girl, and my fear was that I was going to kill her in one of my rages, and the second fear was that my husband and I would get a divorce. We had been married seven years. I hated him. I thought he was going to be my Prince Charming when we had gotten married, and he was far from that. He worked two jobs. He had a flying hobby. He was never home. But, of course, I was home. I had a two-year-old little, very strong-willed little girl, a newborn son, and I was so unhappy and such an angry person that I took it out on that two-year-old little girl to the point that I almost committed suicide because I really was terrified and convinced that I was going to kill her in one of my rages. Billy, it's it's, it's shameful to say that I choked her one time in one of my rages, and it, it had gotten so bad that I really believed my ending my own life was the only way. But uh, what made it worse was that I had been a Christian for 10 years. I had been praying, but God wasn't answering it. Little did I realize that he had a different plan. I prayed for an instantaneous deliverance. He wanted to do a process that would show me the underlying causes of my anger, my fears, And that's what he did. So little by little, he pulled our family out of that very destructive time. Uh, Our daughter is now 42 years old, and she calls me her best friend. We have a fabulous relationship. And Larry and I recently celebrated our 47th wedding anniversary. He's the love of my life. And out of that very painful time, began what I currently do, which is to reach out to others and share the hope that God does offer help regardless of the fear that we have and even the hopelessness in our lives. Wow. 
Um, first of all, I want to say, Kathy, thank you so much for having the courage to share that with us. That most people wouldn't do that. So I, I, I thank you for, 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 for sharing. Would you? Oh, thank you. Um, sorry, I'm crying. Um, would, would, would you share with us how you got through that, Kathy? Because that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to get through. Could you be specific? I know that, you know, your faith is very important. So could you really share as much as you could about how you got beyond that? Oh, I, I would love to, Billy, because uh, so many are struggling with these kinds of things, and it does seem hopeless. Um, first of all, like I said, I was praying and demanding from God that he would just automatically take away all of my anger just instantaneously that I would never be angry again. So as he began to show me the underlying issues, first of all, I had to recognize that it, when I was in third grade, I had an anger problem already. And I hit my best friend Irene in the face with my fist for I don't know, I don't remember what. And you know what I thought right then, Billy? I must never get angry again. See what happens, Kathy? When you get angry, you better never get angry again. That was a vow that set up the lie that said all anger is wrong. And so one of the things God began to teach me based on the Bible is that all anger isn't wrong. Sometimes it is justified righteousness that's looking for justice that there's a reason we should get upset because we need to do something about injustice and so instead of trying to squelch it like i did as a child which is what felt like the only thing i could do is to get in touch with it and so even now i still have the temptation of becoming angry which leads into fear that there's no hope so I have to say, okay, I'm getting angry right now. It's okay. I can choose to believe the truth that I'm not being threatened, either in my soul or my emotions. Another thing I did, and this was particularly important for the healing of our marriage, was to recognize that my nagging, my unhappiness, my belief that Larry should be the answer to all of my problems, that he was the supplier of my happiness, I had to get over that lie. Because that creates a fear that if that person doesn't supply that, I'm hopeless. There, there's no hope for me. So one day, and, and this wasn't a, a voice, but something in my heart, and I felt like God told me, I want you to tell Larry that you love him. And Billy, I could not. It was no way he's going to use it against me and keep doing everything he does wrong. And then a second time the message came, I said, absolutely not. A third time the message from God changed a little bit. And he seemed to say, then I want you to think it the next time you see Larry. Well, Larry was off on another flying trip, hadn't taken me. I was furious. But I said, I'll do that because he won't hear me and use it against me. And so I did. I forced myself when he walked down the hall towards me, when he got home, to think, I love you, but I don't really, because it wasn't true. But then I chose over and over again to think that and to God did a work by me realizing, you know what, love is a choice. It's not a feeling. I could make a choice to love Larry, to treat him well, to stop nagging, to stop believing he was the source of my happiness. And you know what? That drew him close to me again. I was no longer, longer that mean, nagging wife. It actually he goes, wow, she's different. I sort of like her. I remember why I like her. And these are Larry's words. And so then we began to go on a journey 
<clears throat> of learning how to restore our marriage. And we went to conferences, we read books, we uh, did many things. And as usual in most stories, there are many, many things. But going back to the abuse of, of our daughter, I began to read parenting books. I began to read about what real healthy anger was like. And even a silly thing like, Billy, this will make you laugh. I, when I would have that anger start rising up inside of me, I would go to the end of the hall where my daughter couldn't see me, and I would jog in place. Because anger creates tension. And it's the tension that creates energy that makes us want to act out in a physical way. And so by just dispelling that energy, I was then able to just come back to our daughter and give her a consequence for her behavior rather than trying to use my anger, my fear, uh, whatever, to make her change. But it was the consequence that made a difference in her behavior and being consistent with consequences really made a difference and also helped me to be more disciplined in my reactions to her. Kathy, how do you face fear in general? Even today, I really, this is such a core belief with me right now, uh, Billy, and I know that you relate to that. I honestly believe most of the time that God knows what he's doing with my life. I don't need to fear, even if bad things happen. Two years ago, I'm in my 60s, I had my first ever grand mal seizure. And it was actually in a restaurant in Athens, Greece, where we had taken a trip to uh, give uh, counseling there. And my first ever, I was on the floor of the restaurant. My husband, who's a retired cop, was able to care for me while they called the ambulance, and I was unconscious for two hours. And you know what? I was diagnosed with epilepsy, and right now the Lord has graciously allowed the amount of medicine I'm taking to, to take care of it. But you know, every once in a while we all get this. There's a little muscle twitch. There's a little bit of that, and I think, <gasps> Am I going to have to, is this going to be the start of another seizure? Am I going to have to raise my, my medicine amount and then I'll be even more tired? And what does that mean? But I just have to say, God, you know what you're doing. You're in charge. Even if something worse happens, you have a plan. You're going to use it. And my husband was recently diagnosed with a strange disease called urticaria. He gets hives. He, he, different parts of his body swell. He has the, the fear of his, his throat swelling, and then he could die. And yet both of us say, the Lord's in charge. Thank God that he's using some medicine in, for Larry that's helping but there's always, every single one of us have at the back of our mind something bad that's happened to us, and will that happen again? So for me, even death is not the worst thing. It's, it's that God knows how he's going to use it. And my own story has been used over these many years to help other people. And so even that bad thing of what I did wrong, there's a good something that happens from it. Faith has clearly played a huge role in, in, in your life and how you address fear and everything that we've talked about today. What other resources have you come across and used in your life that we might be able to incorporate into our own journeys? Oh, thanks for asking that. Obviously, for me, it's the Bible. Through the Bible, I learn more and more about Jesus and God's love and how he always intends good, even when we don't see it. Also, just having uh, people pray. I just this morning, my sister is one of my main uh, prayer partners, 
and I shared a concern with her. And uh, it could turn easily into a major fear that I could lose sleep over. But she prayed for me, and so knowing that. And then thirdly, just sharing overall struggles. Just saying, hey, I'm feeling this way. Maybe I have a relationship with someone that I feel like is at odds. And just rather than worrying and fearing about it or what could happen, just saying, I'm going to go to that person and I'm going to share, hey, this is the way, is this what, you know, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm feeling, what's your perception? So sharing rather than letting these these concerns and fears turn into worries that can even incapacitate us. Are you ready for the speed run? I am. <laughs> What individual, whether they're fiction or real, has made the most impact on your life? Well, of course, I would have to say Jesus. But other than Jesus, my husband. You know, we have had struggles. We have had challenges. And yet he, uh, in his logical mind, which I didn't always appreciate, he is the one who comes back to what is the truth here. What is the truth? Let's talk it through. Tell me what you're thinking. What's going on? And I just admire him so much. And if you could instantly change one thing in the world, what are you going to change? I would really like people, Billy, to know that when they feel rejected by others, it's primarily because the other person is responding out of their own fears and worries and emotional wounds. We so often take it personally. We, we see it as a reflection of our worth and value. But most of the time, they are responding because they're afraid, because they are worried, because they feel attacked in some way. And that way, if we see it as we both need help, uh, then we can respond to them in a loving, caring, and unconditional way what's your biggest weakness my biggest weakness is I tend to take things personally <laughs> so that's a message for me that you know what it's not just because of me it's there, there it's a multi um, leveled kind of response for all of us and it doesn't necessarily say anything bad about me. It might, but even then, because God values me, I can say, you know what, I want to move towards you, who I perceive as a threat, instead of pushing away and thinking you think I'm a horrible person. What's your biggest strength? My biggest strength is I love to write, and God has given me that talent. And I love to be at my desk, and yet I also love to be speaking to a group. But I do love to write. I love to express. I love to share with other people in whatever way I can that there is hope and we don't need to be afraid. And Kathy, if you could only have one book to read, what's that book going to be? Actually, Larry Crabb wrote a book that is called Finding God. And that was seminal in me beginning to see life differently. That, uh, that you know what, I, I really can get in touch with what my wounds are so that I can love others because they're wounded too. We're all wounded healers. And so that's what we want to share with others. And do you have a favorite sound? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that, Billy. I was hoping you would, because you know what it is. It's the sound of my 10-year-old grandson talking to me. He is a amazing communicator and talker, and he talks quite a bit. And I love it. I love every sound that comes out of his mouth, because he is sharing with me his heart, his interests, 
And it's just fascinating to me. I love him so much. I love him talking to me. And I trust that when my granddaughter uh, grows up, that I know I will love the sound of her voice too. And Kathy, if someone would like to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Oh, thanks for asking. Uh, most likely my website blog, it's kathycollardmiller.com. That's Kathy with a K and Collard Greens Light, kathycollardmiller.com. And Kathy, what parting advice would you like to impart with us today? I think that when we start to fear or we feel attacked, to just stop and say, okay, what's really going on here? How can I turn my gaze to what the truth is and not overreact, not feel threatened, but to see what really might be going on, especially in the heart of the other person? That's excellent advice. Something truly to consider. I, I appreciate that. Um. Sorry, I was engrossed in that. I was just listening really intent because I'm kind of actually going through that right now. So, <laughs> you know, A practical thing for that, Billy, is I encourage people, especially in my speaking engagements, I pass out rubber bands to everyone, and I have them put it on their wrists, and I challenge them to wear the rubber band for a week, and whatever it is that they want to be reminded of, that they look at that rubber band, and let it be a reminder that, hey, am I worrying? Am I fearing? Am I thinking negatively? Am I not seeing truth? And then to even give themselves a little snap as a reminder that they can uh, take their thoughts captive and that they can turn to peace and love and kindness and it is possible not to fear. Kathy, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. You are the epitome of courage. So thank you <laughs> so much for coming on and and sharing your story with us today. I, it just it was amazing spending time with you. So I, oh. I I thank you. My privilege, Billy, and thank you for giving so many of us the opportunity to share hope that we can overcome our fears. It's an important topic. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.